Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about the work of one particularly mad lad, and it's a fellow by the name of Miguel Diacaza, probably butchered the pronunciation of that, but this guy is very important in the world of game programming and programming in general, because you could actually argue Unity would not exist without Miguel. Why is that? Well, this guy is the guy that invented, along with another fellow by the name of Nat Friedman, Mono. So the open source c sharp implementation, the entire thing that uh, Unity was built around, yeah. This guy created that. On top of that, he started the company's GNOME as well as Xamarin. He worked and created the uh, Midnight Commander file uh, manager, a ton of stuff. He worked at Microsoft for a while. He was actually part of Microsoft open sourcing uh, the entire .NET stack. So the guy has definitely contributed a number of things to uh, the game development world. And then more recently, he's actually been working with Godot. He created language bindings for the Swift language for Godot as a GD extension. Swift is Apple's programming language. It has been open source since, but I don't know if anyone actually uses it outside of the land of Apple. But basically, if you wanted to use Swift as your programming language instead of like GDScript or C Sharp or whatever, you can do that on Godot Game Engine thanks to this GD extension project. But he took this one step further and started using his Swift extensions to create Exogot, Exogot, Exogot. I'm going to go with Exogot. Basically, this is Godot on an iPad. And honestly, it is mind-blowingly good. It's amazing how much he has done with it. It is available for test right now. If you have test flight, you have to fill out a form and sign up. The form to fill it out is right here, sign up form. Uh, once you're in, it is a really cool implementation of Godot on the iPad. And I've got to be honest, it greatly exceeds anything that I imagine was possible. So what we're seeing right now, this is me using an application called Reflector to reflect the screen. Uh, so this is over Wi-Fi to my PC. It's not going to be the smoothest shot you've ever seen. So if you see any lag, it's going to be because of my screen, uh, the way I'm capturing things, and as opposed to my iPad itself, because this runs crystal smooth on my iPad. So you see here, you have an iPadified interface. And that's what's impressive about this. It's not just a port of Godot to the iPad. It has been just made to work excellently as an iPad app. We've got the Learning Center here with a number of different projects to get you up and going. Uh, see down here, platformers and so on. Uh, we'll start things off. We'll use the twin stick shooter. Go ahead, we'll get that one. Or you could obviously create your own project and we'll load it up now. I've actually created two twin stick shooters at this point in time. And what you're gonna find is it's Godot. Like, it is super awesome how well he's done this, but at the same time, he's also iPadified the UI. So this isn't just a port of Godot. Uh, this is Godot with an iPad-friendly user interface. So here you can see Godot running on an iPad, uh, all of a touch screen. So you see here, I'm using a single finger on the screen and we are orbiting and rotating. Again, any lag you're seeing, uh, that's not real. That's literally just from the capture process. Two fingers, we can do a pan. Uh, pinch zoom in and out, click something to select it. You get a widget for handling it like so. The other nice thing is that this is an iPad app that has been done right. So watch this. I'm going to rotate my iPad. And there you see. So it will work in either landscape mode or in uh, portrait mode, which is really kind of cool. I was actually kind of shocked to see that that functionality is there. So you may be wondering, okay, so there are our guys in this world. How do I actually go about handling things? Well, You'll notice, see the mouse cursor here? If I go up here to the top left, right here, and click, you get your world tab stuff over there. So we can go ahead and we can select, for example, our world environment. So now if I want to go ahead and say, change the uh, tone mapping or whatever of our world environment now that I've selected, how would I do that? Well, then I can come over here to this side and we'll click this little crosshair right here. By the way, this works very well with an Apple keyboard. Uh, and then what you see here, you've got your various different things available. So your uh, environment, your uh, camera attributes and compositor and so on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the environment and we can drill in just like you would otherwise. So let's say I wanna come down here and I wanna change the tone mapping, come down to tone mapping, change from say ACES to filmic to linear and you immediately see the results in your screen. Also over here, you're gonna notice all of your different uh, nodes that you can bind to, your signals, they're all available here as well. Uh, and then we can tap that little guy right there and make that go away again. Let's bring back the side thing over here. So let's go check our project out over here. Let's go find something with a code. So we got our enemy minions right here. So you're thinking, okay, well, this is a sub scene. How do we handle that? Same way you wouldn't do. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna click on the scene icon right here, and it'll boom, open it up in your scene accordingly. Again, pinch zoom to control, uh, orbit, super easy to navigate around. Uh, the only thing that I find that I would love to see added, 
and I don't know, again, this is very early on, and it's amazingly robust for how early on it is. Uh, I'd love to see tool tips. So when you hover over things, so if you're using a mouse or something, you can figure out what some of these icons actually do. But all of the functionality has been uh, basically encapsulated for you. Now you're gonna notice if I come up here, right there, I can switch between uh, my various different scenes that are here. So there is our scene. Select my scene. I go back to the here, and then boom, we're back in our main project. So what about if I want to go ahead and test my game? Surely you can't do that on your iPad. Well, surely you can. So let's go up here, and we hit the little plus icon, and boom, there is your game running. You even get an on-screen controller for handling things. You got button mapping, like so, and ta-da. So there is how you go ahead and test and run your game. I guess I should do some shooting so that you can see the results. But there, uh, you're testing straight in line, same screen. I come over here, uh, exit out, and done. So really, this is a complete version of the Godot game engine running on an iPad. Now, one other thing that's kind of cool, let's go back here to the world environment, open this one back up again, go back over here to properties. So let's get out of tone map. And what you're gonna notice here is if I go to something, for example, the ambient light in the scene, you, he's actually gone ahead and remapped the controls. So you've got iPad style controls here for a drop down list, for example, or here, a color selector. I can pick my ambient light in the scene using a cool color specter or spectrum or whatever. So what they've done is they've basically created this um, complete UI for all of these different things. Again, your numeric entries are done this way as well. Uh, so everything you could think to need to use is here. It's, it's super impressive how well he's condensed this down to an iPad interface. Another thing that we've got here, you might be wondering, okay, well, what about scripting? So here I'm gonna go ahead and we'll open that one up. Ooh. Found a bug there. All right, let's, let's open a script. Mm. Okay, let's manually open a script. Again, it is in preview, so this is one of those things that is a work in progress. What you're seeing right now, uh, this is me running it. I have a keyboard attached. So we're getting um, no on-screen keyboard comes up, but you see here, So you are getting your code completion. You get your full editor in there. Now let's say I did not have the um, iPad keyboard set up like I do. So let me just undock it now. And let's see, there you see it. So the keyboard will come up on screen. Now the cool thing about this one is, now typing and dealing with it with the keyboard on screen like this is really annoying because it takes up so much of your real estate. But remember, you can actually orbit like this. So you can have your thing in a portrait mode or landscape mode, whichever works best. And then you're gonna see you have your uh, code editor available there below. So that is super, super cool. On top of that, you'll notice down here at the very bottom, you've got output, debugger, audio, and so on. So those are your typical uh, Godot windows hidden down like this. All the editors are available and so on. Um, just super impressive stuff. I come up here to the very top. You have this tab with a little bit of help. Uh, that also links into the asset library. If you want to access the traditional Godot asset library, it is all available through that little uh, hat at the top there. Over here, you've got an export option. Uh, so bring things out over there. Uh, and then uh, you also have settings available over here. So settings and all the various different project settings and Exogot settings are available here. Uh, and you'll see show advanced, there's a number of different options, things that have been hidden. Uh, so for example, if you don't like this theme, there does appear to be the option to specify a theme in here. So if you want, you could load in a theme if you had uh, one available as a file system. Now that is one of those areas where uh, this is going to struggle a bit simply because the iPad struggles a bit is it's not wonderful for working with the native file system. It works as well as you could. It's just the native file system isn't a beautiful thing on iPads when it comes to doing game programming. But this is staggeringly impressive in what it is capable of doing. I, I am actually a little bit blown away uh, by what all is included here and how well this ultimately works. So let's go bring up Kenny's 3D platformer starter kit as an example. Uh, we will switch to the 3D view. Here you see again, a world, very simple navigation using 
mouse and keyboard, handling like so. Select things in the world. You can see them over here from your selection or when you've got something selected, bring up this guy. All the various different properties of that entity are available here. And again, they have these uh, special um, inputs for handling. So it's working just like you would expect it to work on an iPad. It is a wonderful editing experience. I highly recommend checking this thing out uh, if you have uh, an iPad available. Again, some of the details about that, they're all available over on his site, blog.laterminal.net. Uh, and again, it's Zogot Godot on the iPad. It is currently in preview. As you saw, we had that one bug with the script not coming up for some reason, and that is like super rare. I think that's the first bug I've actually encountered. So it's it's a super impressive project. It's one of the most impressive things I've seen this year. And if you have an iPad, I would highly recommend checking it out. It's actually pleasant to develop on, and especially if you have a keyboard available to you. It, it, it's a, just a good experience. And the editor is is great. I, I, they, I've really enjoyed how well he has implemented touch controls and on-screen displays controls and so on. So I would recommend checking this one out. So that is Zogot. Uh, this is Godot on an iPad. I don't know what the future of this is going to be. I don't know if he's going to commercialize this or just release it for free or I have no idea where he's going with this. But if this does become a commercial project, honestly, I think it's worth it. So that is uh, Zogot, uh, Godot on the iPad. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.